Good afternoon and welcome to ICE Webinars, a cool place for hot topics. Today we're joined by Brian Parsley, Principal at the Constance Group. Uh, just a quick reminder to save the date for our 10th anniversary ICE 2024, which will be held at the Hyatt Regency in Irving, California next year, February 18th to the 20th. The Imaging Conference and Expo is the only conference dedicated to, dedicated to imaging directors, radiology administrators and imaging engineers. ICE also offers valuable CE credits from the ASRT and ACI and is a unique community of key decision makers and influential imaging professionals. For more details, please visit attendice.com. Uh, if you'd like the chance to be a presenter at ICE 2024, details can be found in the handout section of your webinar dashboard. Today's live webinar is eligible for one ARRT Category A CE credit by the AHRA, and you can obtain your CE certificate by completing the post-webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one CE credit, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. We'll wrap up today's presentation with a live Q&A, so please submit your questions anytime using the questions feature on the webinar dashboard. Let's kick off today's webinar by giving away one of our brand new ICE gym bags to the attendee that can tell me the answer to the following trivia question. The Kentucky Derby took place on Saturday, so what is the flower used in the winner's garland and also the official symbol of the Derby? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the webinar. As I mentioned earlier, Brian Parsley is our presenter today and he will be discussing Mastering the Art of Connection, Unlocking the Power of Effective Communication. Brian, you may begin whenever you're ready. Hey, thank you so much and I'm really glad you're here. Listen, let's, let's be real honest with each other. Some of you are here and you're just playing it so you get your credit <laughs> and that's okay but there's some of you here that want to be a student and if i can convert those that are showing up for the credit and give you some best practices and ideas that will change how you connect with others both personally and professionally that's the key if you join me at the ice conference where i spoke live um i i think that uh you understand that my my spirit is one of wanting to serve and help and give and I'll actually uh, ensure that everyone has uh, my direct details as well, so if I can help you after the fact. Real quick, the Constance Group, uh, you know, it's interesting. We, uh, we're based in Charlotte, North Carolina. We also have an office in Cape Town, South Africa. In fact, I will be going there myself uh, next week and um, to that office. And, and, and Constance was actually my mother's name. And she died when I was one year old, uh, pancreatic cancer. And um, her reputation was one of service of others, giving, connecting. And we wanted to carry on that legacy and therefore named the organization after her. Uh, you'll see the tagline even on that slide that says, less corporate, more human. And I think that's it. In fact, I wrote a blog today that I'll put on LinkedIn here in the coming weeks. but. Um, the, the blog was really about being your authentic self. And maybe we can touch on a little bit about that. Uh, but um, let me turn this on here. We're gonna cover a couple different things. Obviously, I wanna give you some ideas and tools on how to talk to different people because everyone's different. And remember growing up, your mom or grandma said, talk to people the way you wanna be talked to. But the reality is we need to talk to others the way they need to be spoken to, treat them the way they need to be treated. And that's why as a leader within your group or practice or hospital system, the reality is we hire for skill, but we fire for attitude. And it's not, a, a, you know, it's not something that makes us bad or, I mean, we're human, we, we make mistakes, we give people benefit of the doubt, but we assume because they have certain skills that they're gonna be incredible, but it's about culture. Now, they also didn't, in their favor, start because they have this horrible attitude. It's a lot of times we're not able to connect with them. Um, we're not able to speak to them the way they need to speak to. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of this. Um, I just stayed at this hotel a couple weeks ago, uh, down in, uh, well, a few weeks now, down in Jacksonville, uh, Florida. And I don't wanna embarrass the name of it by saying Hyatt Regency, but that's where it was. 
And in the morning, you go down and you'd have breakfast and they had a buffet and I was there for a client. So they gave us these little coupons for breakfast. You know how that is. And the first day I came down, I was standing behind three ladies. I had no idea who they are. And the hostess, she goes, four? And she goes, no, I think it's just three. Why well, see four? <laughs> she had this attitude. And so I was like, well, I guess it's four. So I sat down with these ladies that... The server wasn't much better. Uh, she came over and she said, the buffet's there. I, I need your coupons. And I'm like, oh shoot, I left my coupon upstairs. And very adamantly said, sir, if you don't have a coupon, you can't go to the buffet. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow. You know, but I'm with these strangers and I certainly didn't want to say anything inappropriate or wrong or aggressive. So I just said, oh, okay, I'll go up and I get it. I came back. She was terrible though. And at the end, I gave her five bucks because everybody else left a couple. And I just didn't want to be that guy that didn't leave. She cer certainly didn't deserve it. And I felt like I was rewarding this bad behavior. And I thought about that all day, looking forward to the next morning, too, by the way. And, and just a little side note to that. Imagine at your office and your business, how friendly are you? How approachable are you? How warm or friendly or... Uh, welcoming are your voicemails. I'm either on my phone or away from my desk, you know, those type of things. And what about the people you work with and how do you shop that? How do you, how do you ensure that they are meeting those expectations or standards that you set? And the next morning came down this time by myself. And um, this time I was ready for the rude lady who was there and sure enough, didn't disappoint, you know, how many? And I'm like, looking around, I'm like, one? And she's like, okay. So, the difference on day two, though, was she turned me over to a gentleman. I can't remember his name. It was really a long name, but he said, just call me Rad. I go, where are you from, Rad? He said, Morocco. I was like, oh, Morocco. I've not been there, but uh, I've seen a lot of videos. and It's beautiful. And he was sharing that passion about the country, but he said, I love America. He said, America is an incredible place to live and have opportunities. And I thought, that's really awesome. And he was also really attentive and, and caring during the entire thing. I also forgot my buffet ticket. But he said, don't worry, Mr. Parsley, just eat, enjoy. You can go get it afterwards. And I'm like, okay. So I did that. But I was also watching him serve everyone else with that same level of intensity of, of just kindness and genuineness. So when he came back by with the bill and I said, I'm going to go get the coupon, but I also need to go grab you some cash because I don't have any cash. He said, you don't need to tip me. It's an honor to be able to serve you. And I thought that was really cool. But I said, do you have like Cash App or Venmo, something like that? And he said, no, no, I do. So I gave it to him. When I came back down, he pulled me to the side and he said, Mr. Parsley, I think you made a mistake. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I think when you left me a tip, you left too many zeros. And I was like, what? And so I left him $100. And I think he thought I was going to leave him 10 And and I said, Brad, that wasn't a mistake. That that was what you deserve. I wanted you to have this because you were incredible. And I want you to understand what your worth is. And he said, wow. He's like, I've never really thought of it that way. And, and, I, and, I, and the step above that is I went and spoke with the general manager and I shared with him what happened the day before and then today. And then he said, well, you know what? He said, if I could have 10 rads, I'd be in another world. And I said, but why do you accept the standard of the other that you say you know is bad? He's like, I, I, I don't have an answer for that. I guess we need people. So think about even within your office as you're hiring people, like who are you allowing to stick around? Because if you're like most people, you'd probably love a rad as well. And when you find a rad, how do you keep a rad? You keep them by ensuring that that standard's maintained, right? And he sees the world a little differently than you and I do, perhaps, right? Imagine if you changed your lens, the way you see things. And it comes down to mindset, not attitude. Attitude is wishful thinking, hoping, you know, like, oh, I'm going to be in a happy mood. No, it's about mindset, um, a driving force that says these are my standards and it comes down to a lot of influence in our life and there's three kinds of influence the first is easy positive influence think about somebody that impacted you in a positive way in your life 
you know, mine was Grandma Parsley. When my mom died, I, I spent a lot of time with her. She's funny. She was amazing and kind. And, and I would like to believe that I picked up a lot of those qualities. The, the other influence that we're hit with a lot is obviously negative, and that's pretty easy, right? We, we can all experience that and see that in our life, and, and, um, and also probably stories of other people that have had these negative influences, not just given to them, but to others as well from their actions. But probably the most dangerous and probably the most influential is going to be unintentional influence, unintentional influence. And these are the things that happen to us that we don't even realize. Like I grew up, we lived in a single wide. Why did we live in a single wide? I don't know. I guess that's all my dad thought he deserved. He was poor because his dad was poor. And then you would ask my dad, say, dad, you know, all I want is, all I really want is money. Why do you want money? People with money are unhappy. And I'm like, well, we're broke. We're, we're unhappy too, <laughs> you know? And um, and I remember growing up, I wanted air conditioning and, and he did, this is the seventies. Like, I'm in my fifties, but this is back in the seventies. He would take a fan. He said, we got a fan that'll suck the sheets off the bed. And he had this fan and we put a wet sheet on it at night to blow cool air. Yeah. Electricity and a wet blanket basically, uh, in my room. Uh, but that's kind of how we grew up and they were hoarders. Him, as well as my stepmom, they, it was like TV show. I'll show you some photos real quick here. This, these are photos of uh, their house, you know, growing up. This was the kitchen. This is how I lived. My entire life was filled with just chaos and messiness. My dad, and almost till he was 80, you know, he was sleeping on the couch. And I'd say, Dad, you need to sleep in your bed. He said, that bed's uncomfortable. I'm like, there's a mop in it. <laughs> of course, it's uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, just, this is just... The, the mindset and people go, well, why would you let your parents live that way? Well, I didn't or tried not to. I can tell you I've spent a lot of money over the years trying to you know straighten the house, get them all straight, but it goes right back to that. Why? Because of the mindset. Now here's the takeaway and I want you to understand this. If I have a brother that still lives this way, he lives with this type of chaos, this type of mess in his life, and then you see me, well, you can even see in my office here how I live. I mean, the entire house is like this. And I'm in my home office today. I, I like things to be very neat and organized in their place. It drives me bananas if it's not. But, but yet, he and I were brought up in the same home. What's the difference? You know, because we both had unintentional influence and unintentional consequences associated with our father and stepmother. But here's the interesting part, and this is what I want you to take away. If you ask my brother or you ask me, why are you the way you are? Why are you so neat? Why are you so disorganized? We both will say the exact same thing, and that would be what? Because of my parents. You see, unintentional influence can impact you in amazing ways as well as some challenging ways, and you got to have the sensory acuity to understand that. Now, if we transfer this back into your relationships, and, and by the way, I'm not just talking about your job here. I'm talking about your personal life, your significant other. I'm talking about the people that you have influence over, even unintentionally. There's five pillars to that relationship, rapport, likability, credibility, respect, and trust. And the, quite frankly, the two big ones that people are looking at first is respect and trust. Do I respect you and do I trust you? It's interesting, Harvard did a study and they found that people make a decision whether they like someone in 150 milliseconds. Now, to give you perspective of that, the blink of an eye is 300 milliseconds. So, quite frankly, a half of a blink of an eye is someone sizing you up if they like you or not. But a lasting impression happens within 30 minutes. So, think about that. How many times does that happen to you? You meet somebody, I don't like him, he, he looks like a jerk. But then you meet him and you're like, wow actually not that bad of a guy and to me that's a really great example of relationships so that's why when you hire someone we need to be focusing on these pillars not so much their resume of course they got to have certain skills especially in a profession that requires that however beyond that there are some very well-skilled people that no one wants to be around and what does that do to your brand you know what does that do to your image and that reputation is everything now, again, I can't see the chat. If you have questions, put them in there. We'll, we'll answer them. But also, I want you to know, write down any burst of, you know, just, 
I, I just went totally blank on my own slide. Bur burst of major brilliance. See, I tried to be clever with that and it didn't even come out right. But burst of major brilliance, like if something pops in your mind and you go, man, that's a good one. Write it down because if you don't, I promise you, you're not going to remember, especially not two weeks from now. But there are some principles here that are really cool. Now, what I want to talk to you specifically about in terms of communication is there's an assessment you can take called DISC. D-I-S-C. Now, let me tell you a little background because everybody says, oh, I've done that a thousand times. Well, Carl Jung, which is a psychologist back in the 1800s, and, and he kind of created this whole modality around behaviors. And then a gentleman by the name of Dr. William Marston in the 1920s developed that there are four core styles of these ways people communicate, how they choose to communicate, how they choose to consume information. Please listen very carefully. Not personality not values, only the how part. Now, one thing he did that was a mistake is he never copyrighted or trademarked it. So it's open domain. So if you're not familiar with this, maybe Myers-Briggs, Caliper, there's ones out there with golden retrievers and puppies and otters, you know, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. And what's really interesting about it, it was developed, they found this, this is crazy. These behavioral traits on how you choose to communicate are developed by the age of 13. By the age of 13, that's set in stone. If you have children, you know this is to be true, right? And it has a 0.1 variance throughout your life. And the reason why a lot of people say personality is because they think that's tied to communication, but it's actually not. Personalities, that's a whole other talk, is developed by the age of 27. That's an interesting statistic, plus or minus two years. So that's why if somebody gets married at 22 and at age 30, they're like, she totally changed. Well, yeah, she did. You know, that's very normal. But the communication style doesn't, right? So this is really about behaviors and emotions, and that's it, okay? It's how we choose to act, how we choose to consume information. So it's the what and the how. That's all I want you to walk away with. The other interesting thing is if I had a one-on-one -on -one with you right now or on Zoom or in person, I can observe your body language, and I'm able to just listen to the way you talk, and, and I can identify what style you are. Um, it, there's no right or wrong. It's very neutral. Um, you, you know, what's beautiful is, is that when you take this assessment, and some of you have, and that's cool, maybe you remember your scores, maybe you don't. Um, one thing that uh, I'll share back to our moderator is if anyone would like to take one, we will create an ICE portal. Um, we'll get with my assistant, Lindy, and we'll send you one, and you can take it for free and you can see what your score is. So listen carefully so that when you get your score, you're gonna know. And, um, and we'll do that through you guys. So make it, make it really easy for you. Um, but it doesn't tell me how smart you are, what your skills are. It's just really how you choose to communicate. And why is that so powerful? It's powerful because we talk to a lot of different people. And remember, we have to talk to people the way they need to be talked to. So I'll give you a little bit more insight on that. So the other thing I want you to know is this. In school, when you got a perfect score in, in, in on a test, it's 100, and uh, the lowest score is a zero. But in the world of DISC, when you get your score for the D, the I, the S, the C, it does have a percentage, but 50 is the zero. That's what we call the neutral line. So the farther north you are to that neutral line, or the farther south you are to that neutral line, is going to be more pronounced with a particular trait, one way or the other. The other thing I want you to remember is just because you're high in one area, it actually, another trait could soften that for you uh, or make it more pronounced. So it's really interesting. In fact, just for all you geeks out there, there's over 18,000 different plot points that could be on one assessment. So when you get your score, it is very unique and absolutely very accurate in determining that. And I think it's important that we know ourselves first and obviously you're the most important person in the world, so why not? So when I talk about the D, let's describe high Ds. These ones that are more than 60% or higher. These are traits like, and see if you recognize yourself with this, do it now, get it done, impatient, don't care about the, res uh, the, the details. What do you want? When do you need it by? That's it. I don't care how the sausage is made. I just wanna know what it tastes like. That's a high D. High Ds are not afraid of conflict. High Ds are the first to tell you what you need to know. If they have bad service, like let's say 
rad or perhaps the lady before, they don't have an issue. It doesn't mean they're rude, doesn't mean they're confrontational always, but it does mean that they don't have an issue with that. Where a low D, they might still obviously have the same emotions and feelings of feeling upset or frustrated, but they're a little bit more reserved. Sometimes you don't know if they're a low D, if they really are upset, they keep it close to their vest, right? You want to avoid telling them what to do. You want to give them options. And I'll, and I'll share with you here in a minute, each one of these traits, some secrets or strategies to be able to communicate with them and sell your ideas, which how powerful would that be in, in the office, right? But if we're looking at this D, it's a really interesting, uh, you know, trait because it, it really, if I sum it up in one word, I would say, what? What do you need? You know, what are the results going to be? So just what is kind of that big question? Um, when it says that they, they want to have um, power and authority, it's not from an ego. So they just want to be in control. They want to know that they drive their success. They also drive their failure and they accept that and they, and they take that. They don't want restraints holding them back. Now, when I look at an eye, a high eye, you know, they're more social. You know, these are, they still want to do it now. They still want to be able to, uh, uh, don't don't need a lot of details with it, but but the issue, they like to collaborate. They want to get what other people think. They want to get involvement. But here's the issue for high eyes. You're a people pleaser. <laughs> you always want to go out there and make everybody happy. You volunteer for everything. So they're really crappy at finishing the stuff they start. That's just the way it is. And and I'm a high eye. In fact, I'm 100% D and 100% I. So for me, I care about what people think. I want to help them. I want to serve. I volunteer. I want to get things going. But attention to detail is not my game. It's just not. And it doesn't make me a bad person. It just means I need to surround myself with people that really are, right? They typically have great verbal skills. Now, here's something I want you to understand. If great verbal skills comes with a high eye, which by the way, I've used that strength to get myself out of some real trouble in the past, but overuse of a strength actually becomes a weakness. So overuse of that skill does what? Well, tells me when not to shut up and that's gotten me into trouble as well. So I just want you to kind of consider that as we talk here that the, the, the eye, the high eye, you know, which by the way is driven by trust. Like you trust people, these high eyes bring home stray people they meet, you know? So like versus the low eye says, it's not that I don't trust you. I just gotta, you gotta earn that trust within me. Um, and, but, but can I make one other point here? Remember when I said at the beginning that the disc is really about, and this assessment is really about how, the how, how you choose to communicate, not the why. I'll give you perspective. You might watch me right now and go, wow, you know, like he's pretty good. He's really engaging. He's uh, outgoing and friendly. I bet he's the life of the party. But my why is not that. My driving forces is not that. If I go to a party, I'm sitting in the corner. I don't want to be sung happy birthday. I don't like doing toast. At, and everybody thinks, oh, get up there and entertain me, monkey boy. You know, and I'm like, no, that's not what I do. You know, this is work. Of course, I turn it on just like you do. But the why, the values, that's a little different than the how. And that's all we're doing today is the how. And it's not that I'm fake, it's, it's who I am, but I feel a lot more, uh, I don't know, I don't wanna say reclusive, but I'm a little bit more private when it comes to you know, my personal life, okay? But a lot of times when you think, of, by the way, the who is the big question with these. Remember the what for the D, the who. Who else is doing this? What's the social proof? Um, they're the people that if other people are doing it and it looks good, I want to do it. They want to have the newest technology, you know, those type of things. Now, the S is also something that's very interesting. It's called steadiness. So D is dominance or direct. The I is influence. The S is steady or steadfast. And that high S, those people are predictable, dependable. They're team players. They, they, they like things in a nice, neat place. You know, you can tell if it's a high S. <laughs> Tell me if you know somebody like this at your office. They'll have a picture of a drawing their two-year-old made, but their two-year-old's now 22. They they don't get rid of stuff, man. They like things there. And and the low S, I happen to be like a um, a 10% S. They love a million balls in the air. They're constantly, you know, putting themselves under pressure. They work better that way. They love a million balls because then they can manage the chaos. And a high S that would drive them bananas. If you you know that you got a high S, if you move their desk somewhere else, they're gonna freak out, 
for a high D or a high I, it's like, oh, cool, we got new scenery. And when you think about this, they don't like change for the sake of change. So if you're talking to one of your teammates and you realize they're a high S, what do you got to do? Well, I need to say, look, I really need your support in this. And this is the reason why. But let's say it's urgent. Hey, look, I don't have time to explain the why behind this, but here's what I need you to do. I need you to trust me and then we can talk later. Then they're okay with that. But short of that, they, they're going to resist or push back a little bit for change for the sake of change. They like security. By the way, this is not beer. Ironically, it's uh, it's just plain old sparkling water. But, you know, it, when anything called liquid death. And by the way, it's not sponsored by them. But I needed to wet my whistle there. But let me tell you something else. Trust is huge with these people. If you violate the trust of a high S, it's going to be difficult to recover. It really is. Um, remember when I said the D is um, the what and the I is the who? Well, the S is the how. How do I do that? You know, how, how's the process going to work? How do you want it delivered? That's really their big MO there. The C is compliance. You know, a really high C is predictable, dependable as well. Uh, they don't move fast. In fact, they'll probably frustrate D's and I's quite a bit. That high C crosses their T's. They cross their lowercase j's. You know you're a high C when you read that email three times before you send it. Very critical. Um, you know, they, they look at everything three, four times. They, they don't, they'll wait until all the lights turn green before they head to town, right? They want to have a different type of control than a D. They, they also don't, you know, it's funny. I can go to a high C and say, oh, tell me about your weekend. How was your daughter, your son? But inside they're thinking, even though they may not say it, they're thinking, I don't even know you. Why, why are you saying something like that? You know, like that's personal. I don't know you. And I'm not trying to paint them as robots because people love them. They're human. They get married. My wife is a high C. She's a hundred percent C. And she's like a 90% ass, totally opposite to me. What does that mean? Oh my God, you guys might spot a lot. Actually, we complement each other. There are some communication challenges that we have to make sure we're aware of. She hates that I don't give her all the details. So I have to force myself to make sure I do a little bit more. And for her, having that flexibility to say, look, I know it's a, his intent is okay. Here's a little thing that I just said that I think would be very helpful, probably a bomb you could write down. Um, we tend to judge other people based on what they say or what they do, but we want to be judged based on our intent, <laughs> right? But I didn't say, I didn't mean that. That's not what I meant. So keep that in mind when you're going through this, but they need autonomy to work the process. Remember when I said the D is what? Remember what? The, I feel like I'm playing who's on first. The, oh, who? The I. And then the how is the S, the C is the why. Why is that necessary? Why do we need to do that? They need to have the facts and figures in front of them. So if you think about that, it's not so complex. And I also want to challenge you with this if we think about it. If we know that these behaviors or DISC is about how people do things, and we know that motivations and driving forces are the why, I think we should look at Mother Teresa. And obviously, if I was in your face, I would ask you this question, but most people think that Mother Teresa, if you don't know who she is, Google her real quick, but Mother Teresa was a saint. She was known to what? Serve the masses, the, you know, the sick, the poor. And a lot of people think that she was an S because of that. But the reality is she might've been something different. What if I told you, that she died with a hundred million dollars. True story. You see, Mother Teresa, in terms of her how, the behaviors, would be a high D. How do I go figure that? Her motto. Her motto was, no money, no mission. You don't get more D than that. No money, no mission. She realized that without money, this charity would not survive. What if I told you that she would withhold pain meds from people on their deathbed. You think that's cruel, but in her mind, if they had 24 hours to live, we could use that same medicine and use it on someone that could survive. And this will give us time to help them, you know, get closer to God. So if you look at her why, it was altruism. Her why was serving other people, the kindness, the things that we believe, but it's different than the behaviors. 
Does that make sense? I, I hope it does. There's the difference between behaviors and driving forces. So here's some things you might want to jot down. This is cool. So if you know you're talking to a D, a boss, a coworker, anybody, significant other, maybe, I don't know. Here's the deal. Be direct. You know, just this is what they want. All they want are how, you know, they want to, what's the outcome, right? Their biggest fear is being taken advantage of, okay? Um, you could see it as confrontation. If you're a low D and someone's really, here, let me tell you this, you've seen this, I guarantee you, whether it's you receiving or you giving. When you talk to somebody or you receive this and they were like, you need, a, I'm so upset, I can't believe, blah, 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 blah. And the other person's like, oh, okay. And then they start avoiding them. And then they go, why, why are you avoiding me? Well, you're upset. It's like, what are you talking about? What do you mean I'm upset? Well, like an hour ago, you were screaming. That was an hour ago, man. I wasn't free. That was just personal. It was just me getting upset. That's when you know you got a high D you're dealing with, right? So you got to be prepared for that. When you want to get them to do something, give them a choice. Alternative choice. That's always the secret there, right? But they got to respect you. You know what's cool about a D? A high D doesn't even have to like you, quite honestly. They just have to respect you. And they'll work with you. They'll do business with you. And they'll do whatever you got to do. If I look at the I, they want to make friends because relationships are really important. They buy ideas based on feelings. And, and I tell you, here's how you convince a high eye to do something at work. Just use references. Hey, do you know Mary's doing this? They love that. I don't need a lot of details. I want to make it easy to buy the idea, right? They don't care about warranties. They don't care about guarantees or anything like that. They just want to know if you're talking about something in the office. Hey, what's the innovative technology? Man, that's cool. I want to sell them on that. And I, and I want to make sure that, you know, again, high eyes specifically it's not a bad ego they just they like to have nice shiny up the newest toys they want all that kind of stuff that's that's that high eye but if the d has to respect you what's the i well the i has to like you liking is really important if they don't like you it doesn't matter what you're selling them it doesn't matter how good the job is it doesn't matter how great the opportunity if they don't like you they ain't buying it that's just the way it is the s you always want to talk about family you know, tell them how we're going to get things done. I, I want them to feel safe, you know, like what we're doing. I want to, you know, tell them, hey, I'm here for you. I want to be, I want to guarantee you because high S is they need that. They need to ensure that they're safe and customers and coworkers really become their friends. I mean, that that to me is a really important distinction when we're talking to, to S's. And, and if you are, I'm going to use words like if I'm going to close them on an idea, look, when we're doing this project together, this is what we're going to expect. Or I'm really excited when we do this or work together. Those are the things in terms of strategies with them. But here's the test. Let's see if you get it right. You can put it in the chat if you want. But the D is uh, they got to respect you. The I must like you. What do you think the S must? Hmm, little trick question there. Well, the S must trust you that's right they they have to trust you and when we look at the c really simple don't get personal they need important warranties or guarantees that whatever you're sharing with them is going to be safe to do they need facts you know it's funny like even in my business let's say uh we just signed a national contract with a couple billion dollar company and um and let's say that we were talking to them and said, look, we, we did a project with Apple. They did a six month white paper on the Constance Group and uh, the methodology that we use, whether it's hiring, culture, you know, customer service, things like that. And from that, they found that we were a perfect match for this project. Now, if I was talking to a high eye, remember about relationships, references, the high eye would have said, wow, if it's good enough for Apple, it's good enough for us. But the high C is going to say, show me the facts. I want to take a look at that white paper. That's interesting. Not that they're questioning it. They just need to know to verify, right? Trust, but verify. That's it. So you got to make sure anything that you promise them, you can show it to them. And that's the key, right? They buy on logic. All their emotions are based on logic, okay? And when I say there's a penalty for delay, it's kind of like if I were actually selling something physical and I could save you, I don't know, $10,000 at your house. If I'm a high D or high I, I want to hear somebody say something like, hey, I could save you $10,000. I'd be like, show me how. I'm ready. But if I am uh, a C, there has to be a penalty for delay, meaning 
if you continue using this at your home, it's going to cost you $10,000 more each year. See a big difference as we uh, talk about that. So I want to make sure everything's black and white, very balanced sheet. Here's the trick question. The D must respect you. The I must like you. The S must trust you. Go ahead. I can't hear you. Say it out loud. What do you think the C must? Think about it. And the answer is, you ready? Probably weren't expecting this. Nothing you. They must nothing you. Because you don't factor into their equation. Because they base many of their choices, many of their decisions on one thing and one thing only. And that is, does this provide me the solution that I believe is best that will mitigate the risk and deliver the results that I need and believe it? Now, here's something worth jotting down for you personally and professionally. Um, people either have a problem they don't want, okay, or they have a result they don't have but need. And when you go into any conversation with any individual or person, I want you to consider that. What's the problem they have that they don't want? Or what's a result that they want to have but they don't right now have the ability to get it? Because that's what you're selling. Now, here's something really intriguing for you. I want you to look at this. On the, I don't know if it's your left or right, the column that says trusting, self-confident, cautious. Pick one word. Take a second, pick one word that most describes you in your own opinion. No one's going to hear you. No one's going to see you. But think about that. What one word over there really impacts you in a positive way? Like you go, that's me. I'm very ambitious. Or I'm incredibly trusting. Like that is such a great strength. You got it? Now, what I want you to do, whatever word that you picked, I want you to move that word, look across to the other side. That is overuse of that string. So, yeah, I'm really self-confident. Well, if you overuse that string, people could view you as arrogant. It's not saying that if you're trusting, you're gullible, but overuse of that could put you into a deficit, a weakness. And that's why it's so incredibly important to know whatever your strengths are, have a flip side. And you gotta stay focused on that as well. Does that make sense? Um, I think that what we've done today, and I know we drank from a fire hose here, right? We went through a lot of different things in a short amount of time, but there's a couple of takeaways. Number one, um, and when she comes back on, we can talk about how we want to do that. But if you have an interest in that, she can get your details or somehow, some way, we'll create a portal for ICE and um, and you'll get a link from someone on my team that will, uh, it'll probably be Lindy, who's in our Cape Town office and um, in South Africa, and, uh, and we'll give you a link that you can take it. And, and also, if you want to have questions around it, you're not on your own. You'll get your score, you'll get the ideas, but you can reach out to me. In fact, if you're on LinkedIn or if you're on Instagram, my handle is exactly the same on both. It's just Brian Parsley Speaker. And what I do on all my channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, things like that, is all I do is add value to you personally and professionally. I don't sell anything. Um, so I'll do like a 30 second video every other day and maybe a little meme or something. Um, and what you see there, both on LinkedIn as well as Instagram in terms of that phone number, that is actually my mobile number. And uh, my mobile number is uh, goes right to me. I mean, obviously we have office lines and things, but, but I always like to be available for everyone because this is my passion, you know? I really love, MD Publishing, I think they do an incredible job. John, the CEO, is uh, just an absolutely incredible guy, super smart. And the value that you guys get being a member, I think is, uh, is pretty powerful as well. So what I would like to do is I'm going to unshare my screen, which can you confirm that that's the case, that it's no longer there? It's Yeah, it's just, just showing your webcam. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to put my spectacles on here.
So we can look at the chat. Are there, I don't, well, I can't even see chat. So are there any questions in there or anyone would have any questions? It's um, mainly people asking about receiving the link. Okay, so what would you believe would be the best approach for that? Um, in why don't, if you would like to, um, maybe the people that attended today, perhaps just reach out, see if they'd like to do it, then you give those to Lindy and Lindy can send them out direct individually to everyone to complete. Yeah, that's fine. I, I will be sending you a list of everybody that's attended anyway, Brian. So uh, Lindy would be able to see from that list who to okay. send details to. Well, only if they want. I don't want her to send a detail to someone um, that doesn't have an interest. I'm just trying to think through that. But uh, or we could send it to you. And then if you decide you don't want to do it, just ignore the email. We're not going to put you on a list. We're not going to sell you anything. We're not going to upsell you anything. We're not. This is just my way of giving value back to you guys, because um, this is my passion. You know, I, I, I love this more than anything. And that's why I'm here today, uh, because in fact, I delayed my flight. I'm heading to St. Louis here in just a little bit uh, because I didn't want to miss this. Uh, that that's that's uh, that's just really exciting that that everyone came in today um, and and spent you know some time. But I also don't want to lose this opportunity with with you guys around answering questions, whether it's communication or scenario. And it doesn't even have to be you; it could be my friend. But if you'd like to, I can't see the chat, so I don't know if there's any questions in there or not. Not at the moment, Brian, but. If I receive you guys are my feelings, you you guys are oh there's the chat I see it now well no I don't um, let's see here let me go no I don't see um, is there is there I anything would, you any part of the presentation you would like to expand on as we've got some time. Well, that's, I can expand for four hours. So that's well, why I wanted to make sure that, and it's hard, you know, it's funny when we do these, when we do these things, um, you know, when I go to a keynote somewhere and speak, obviously uh, I can manage my time really well. When, when you're on a webinar sometimes and you can't see people, uh, you can imagine how difficult it is. I'm staring at a green dot on my screen. Um, and, uh, and as much as you want to be, con I was more concerned I was going to go over an hour, so I was speaking as fast as I could uh, to be able to add value uh, for the folks. It looks like there's uh, 23 people that uh, are in here right now anyway. Um, so I, I think, okay, so let me share one thing. This, this I think is really important. If you write down the word A3, the letter A and then the number three, what does that mean? The key or the, the, the most important thing you can walk away with today in terms of behaviors in general, whether you take the assessment or not, is number one, the first day, awareness. You gotta be aware of your own tendencies. You, you have to understand, like I tend to be really direct. I tend to be very fast paced. And people want to be around people that are like them. So if I'm with someone that is more laid back and chill and relaxed, I need to, number one, assess that. So I need to be aware of my own tendencies. The second A is assess those tendencies of other people. So if I visualize and see someone not using a lot of hand movements, not talking fast, very laid back in their chair, I need to mirror that and match that energy, that cadence of speed and talk or, uh, the tonality. And then the final A is adapt. So be aware of my own, assess others, and adapt my behavior. Now, why is that important? Well, because 55% of communication is actually nonverbal. It's body language. 55%. 38% is tonality, how you say the things that you say. So consider that. That means that that means that 93% of communication has nothing to do with the words. That's why these behavior traits are so incredibly important for you to match the person that you're talking to. Just having that sensory acuity to watch, observe, and be able to adapt your style back to them. 
that that to me is is probably one of the most important things that you could take away here today. Kelly, I've actually got one attendee who is asking whether you'd be willing to share your slides. Um, well, we don't, but that's not because I'm being, it's just because of uh, IP stuff. Uh, but, I, or I tell you what, if you want to reach out to me, I can figure something out because, because a lot of these won't make sense anyway, you know, you don't have pictures of my parents' house, but if you want to reach out to me, um, I'm happy to, um, make sure you get what you need. You know what we actually will do? This will actually help you. I think I know what you want. You want to be able, at, I can't see the chat. So if this is what you want, say yes. You're wanting to be able to say, I want to be able to look at something that I can go back and um, and say, okay, the do's and the don'ts when I'm talking to the different styles. What are the the signs and symptoms? What are the traits I'm looking for? Is that is that basically what you're looking for? Yes, yes, it's coming back Perfect. as yes, yes. I'm for you, I'm yeah. going to have Lindy create a cheat sheet, and the cheat sheet will be two pieces of paper. I have I don't have one right in front of me, but I have one printed and laminated where they're back and forth. And it'll go D-I-S-C. It'll tell you everything that we talked about on one thing, you know, words that resonate, um, things to look out for, how to communicate, all that right there on one sheet for you. And um, and I'll have her, uh, I'll have her do that. So she'll send that with the link. So you can get a PDF and you'll get the link and I'll make sure that that happens right away. And I think that'll be better than you looking at a PowerPoint slide. Perfect. How about that? Thank you. That question. sounds perfect. Yes. I have actually have one question come in. It says, I really want to understand how to better understand how to better communicate with my spouse. He is the hoarder and I have the I am the obsessive compulsive neat freak. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um yeah, that's a hard one. I, I think you gotta really unpack you know it's more than communication i think it's uh, tolerance is a good word and it especially when uh you know we we here's the problem we think we think we know we think we think we know but do we really know the answers because everything that we believe to be true are based on the bias in our life experience uh what we've seen what we've uh you know been exposed to and when you think about that, you have to almost argue in their perspective. Why are they the way they are? Why are, instead of right or wrong, uh, because that, that's a tough one. I'm fortunate that, you know, my wife is very similar to me, but uh, we're different in other ways. And I don't think you'll ever have this perfect dichotomy uh, or this perfect uh, uh, alignment in a relationship. But um, I don't think that's behavior. I think that just comes down to beliefs. And experiences um, and for me I think it's control that's me if I was going to unpack it I, I have control issues I want to make sure that uh, win or lose it's because of me not because of some outside influence where I have a friend that is more like a hoarder and his is like why are you stressing out about that man that's not even that big of a deal sure there's stuff in it but I know where it is it's not like it's filthy it's just clutter i mean like it doesn't bother me at all and um and i think that you know we have three daughters teenagers and um quite frankly they're like living with homeless people you know they're they're squatters in this house and filthy you know and it drives me bananas but that's a behavior that's you know like that that they'll grow out of as adults i don't know the answer to be honest with you but um i i think that being able to have open dialogue and by the way the views and opinions expressed by brian do not reflect those of md publishing or anybody else so don't come back to me and go home and say i told him get out that's not what i'm <laughs> suggesting but i want you to know that having that open dialogue listen i'm going to talk about how broken we are i'm going to give you an example a real life example that just happened a little bit ago with my wife she got logged out of our nest cameras okay and I have two email addresses that are personal. One's a Gmail, one's a regular one. And she goes, here's what she, she sent me a thing. And this is it. I don't know if you see it. It says, it says the password doesn't work because I changed the password. And I told her what the password was. 
And I said, I, I, I saw she was logging into the wrong account. And I said, I think you're logging into the Brian Parsley and it's really B Parsley. And, and then she goes, uh, here's what she said. Okay, you didn't give me that information. That's a trigger, isn't it? That's a trigger because I did give that information. She's a high C, she's compliant. She said, you didn't give me that information. Okay, so I responded with, um, do you see how that makes me feel like you're accusing me of something? But I'm also sure it's not your intent. I tried to soften that a little bit because I'm a high D. But I felt like she's sitting here telling me, you know, uh, you know, you didn't do what you said you were going to do. And I know I did. And I even did uh, this little emoji, the hand flap, which is probably what I shouldn't have done. But she sent back, you know, uh, you know, well, you're accusing me of making a mistake, you know, as if I should know, but it wasn't my intention to make you feel accused. And then we talked on the phone and we started with, listen, I love you. And I know that wasn't, and you know mine. And, and that's like, let's just start. That's the key and the secret to me. It's not that you're going to not have disagreements or this is my own garbage I'm sharing with you. I struggle with it every day. But I'm also the first to say I'm human and I made it, I would not want her to be upset. And that's my problem, actually, not even her problem that I felt, I hate to use this word, triggered by that. <laughs> that's on me, not her. But we lash out. Why do people get angry? They get angry because of fear. Fear is, fear is the trigger because anger is only a manifestation of fear. That's why people lash out to protect themselves. Ego. Let me give you a little saying, ready? Ego is not your amigo. <laughs> That's what you're gonna have to walk out of here with. Your ego is what causes the challenges that you have. My challenges are driven by my ego. I'll give you one other real life example. So I'm going to South Africa, not just for business, but some pleasure. And I've worked with the same company for 12 years that does all of our trips. And this trip, I'm spending a lot of money, like you know, 30 grand. A lot of money because not just me it's it's like the extended family and everybody and there was one outstanding thing they sent me and i think it came out to be it's ten thousand rand so whatever that is five hundred dollars i think is what it is um and the lady sends me an email she goes here's the invoice of the outstanding balance remember i've already given them like 30 grand okay and so i reply back and said would you like me because it costs money to wire would you prefer that I wait and um, and do this, making sure there's no other invoices or pay now? Either way, I'm fine. But I prefer to wait just so I don't have to do two $50 wire fees. She responded back, something, something. And then here's what she closed with. I prefer if you pay your outstanding invoice today. Okay. I got really mad. And, and, and it took me about an hour to figure out why, and here's why. Because growing up, my dad never paid his bills. Growing up, we had bill collectors calling our house. Growing up, it was a shame. I felt a shame because we had a car taken away. So as an adult, I pay my bills the day they cycle. I don't even wait till they're due. My bill gets comes in, American Express, paid. Water bill, paid. I don't want to owe anybody anything. I don't have debt because I'm that obsessive about it. And I felt like when I unpacked this, she was questioning my integrity. She was calling me a deadbeat that I am not willing to pay that. I need to pay right now because I'm not good for it. Do you see who's at fault? Because I talked to the CEO who I'm friends with. He goes, oh my God, Brian, I definitely read the way you're reading it. But at the same time, she would be appalled and, and just mortified if she offended you because that would never be in her intent. She's not like that at all. She just is a high C accountant, matter of fact, direct. You have a balance, please pay your balance. It wasn't about me personally, but do you see, I'm sharing with you my own flaws. Maybe you can relate to it in some way, but that is what we have to deal with as it relates to behaviors. Perfect, great. That's helpful. I'm yes, much appreciated his comments. <laughs> um, I have one more question here before we wrap up. So, okay. will understanding DISC improve my emotional intelligence? No. Um, there is a different 
thing we have a if you go to the Constance Group website, you know, our company, we, we have a psychologist on staff um, and we do perform EQ assessments and debriefs. Um, we do not do clinical diagnosis because we're not a medical facility, but she is an organi uh, organizational psychology psychologist. But there are many EQ assessments you can take and to identify that and regulate those emotions and, and you know and all that and in fact i need to do one myself um but the disc is only how you choose to communicate that's it but that's an important part because we do communication every day all day so so that's certainly really important but eq is equally important it's just a different modality that's all so thank you everyone uh for uh joining us today and certainly uh, follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram. I'd love to have you. I'm, I respond to every single comment. And if I can serve you in any way, please know you can always reach out to me directly as well. So thank you great. guys very much. Thank you so much, Brian, for your time today and such a great presentation. I'm gonna make everybody here in the office take that, have that link as well so we can find out what we're doing. But as promised, the answer to today's trivia question is the red rose. So congratulations to our winner, Nancy McDonald. And just a quick reminder, you can obtain your CE certificate by completing the post webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of the webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one ARRT Category A CE credit from the AHRA, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. Uh, please visit icewebinars.live for more details of all our upcoming ICE webinars and complimentary registration. Thanks again for your time today, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.